Are you blessed and highly flavored? Are you anointed and pointed and ready to go? You know, I hear that some Bible study, amen? It's a training session. There's a war going on and God's called you to become part of his military. Amen? <laughs> and there's a heavy-duty war going on. If you haven't noticed what's going on in the world, what you see going on in the world is going on in the spirit realm also. Amen? Amen. Vital, vital, vital things are happening right now. You're not here by coincidence today, although some got deceived and didn't make it. But praise God. <laughs> Turn to the book of Peter, the first Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter 4. You know, when I was a child a couple weeks ago, <laughs> I used to think people that went to church were old and knew that they were getting ready to die, so they went to church. <laughs> I had no idea about fellowship. I had no idea... I always believed that this Bible was nothing but a story because that's what I was told by a priest when I was a kid. Boy, he set me off course. Of course, they're all off course themselves. It wasn't until I had a visitation from the Lord delivered me and healed me and freed me. That's everyone's desire is to want to know truth. That's everybody's desire. There's an area where people, everyone wants to know who they are, why they're here, and where they came from. The day I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the visitation from the Lord brought me to the other side. It began to reveal to me all darkness and all kinds of other things that was going on and introduced me to the Holy Spirit. I thought that was a salvation experience for everyone. I thought, man, everybody needs to accept Jesus. <laughs> you're going to know him. You're going to follow. You're going to know the truth. And in his presence, the first thing I realized that was his presence is what everybody's looking for and doesn't know it. Amen. And the voice of the stranger, the enemy of this world, puts drugs, sex, rock and roll, all kinds of things. Not that there's no wrong with rock and roll in some Amen. areas. As long as that's not demonic. But he puts everything in front of us and distracts us so we get fulfilled, but it's only temporary because there's never a true fulfillment. Everything we get that feels good here is temporary. It's, mom it's moments. So then we look for more. We look for more. We look for more. It's a crack. It does the first hit. He looks for more and more and more and never finds it. Never finds that same high again. Because it's nothing but a lie. And all of these things, because the rule of this earth is Satan, what he does is he replaces God's presence because that's where we originally had come from. That's where we came from, his presence. He sent us into this realm, but the moment you were conceived, you forgot everything. So you've been walking in this world going, who am I, why am I here, where am I going, and what the heck is my purpose? I was like that for almost 39 years. Until I met the truth. But the truth is just not something written. The truth is a person. He's the one that created all things. He holds all things. He loves, every, you know, everything is created by love. And when I had that visitation, I realized that his presence was everything I was looking for. It was the greatest love and purest love of everything. And man, was I fulfilled. And the second thing I realized was I've been lied to my whole life. Even by my parents, even though they were good people, but they didn't know the truth. See, Jesus never brought religion. He brought relationship. He's just trying to get us reconnected back to his presence again so that we can be fulfilled and living from the future to the present, no longer from the past, no longer from the worries. Not looking for a job that will fulfill, not looking for enough money that will fulfill. None of that works. Not looking for the right husband or the right wife. None of that fulfills. Not having a bunch of kids, that will not fulfill. Amen. You can have everything and still not be fulfilled. 
doesn't matter. It's not to you're connected to his presence. And when you get connected to his presence, there's a fulfillment, there's a peace, there's a joy, and there's fruits of righteousness. There's a love that's, and there's an understanding that surpasses everything that you need to figure out because you don't have to. You just know you're connected. You know that you're loved. You know everything's going to work to the good. Isn't that a wonderful way to live? So there's no more survival. You're not in a survival mode anymore. You're in a surrender mode. You're just leaning on him all the time. And you're looking to make contact. And he's always before you in everything that you do. He says, acknowledge me. So you're always acknowledging. What do you think? How, do you, how should I do this? And in this place is relationship. He's not asking us to do anything but get connected back to him. That's all he wants. It's like a, a parent that lost their child saying, come on back home. Get reconnected. That's all he wants. But religion tries to put all of these things on us. Of course, we want to do the things that please him, but you want to do the things that please him because you're connected to him. Amen. And death no longer is a fear. But it was a fear when I was out there using. Because I knew if I died in that condition, I'd gone to hell. That's a terrible place to be. Because it's real. Because only righteousness and justice enters the throne room. Not good and evil. Righteousness and justice enters the throne room. That's it. I don't understand why God kept me alive if how many times I overdosed. Maybe because I said, God, if I die, take me home. He said, no, you can't come home that way. Because either the angels come and get you or the demons do. And those demons are real. In 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. So this Bible is a book, it's a manual, it's training. It is written of the history of things that have occurred. That's why there's a book of Acts. There's Acts, all kinds of things in this Bible that is actually a training manual. We've got to stop looking at this as some kind of religious book. Amen. It's a training manual. Amen? Amen? It's biblical instructions before leaving earth. B-I-B-L-E. In verse 12, let's speak it. Is everybody okay? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. Anybody have trials going on in your life? Amen. Well, if you don't, come on up and I'd gladly give you one. Amen. You can take one of mine. Verse 13. <laughs> but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings. That when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. See, some of the sufferings that we go through, uh, some of the things that we bring on ourselves, because there's a law called sowing and reaping. Amen. And there are places where we have lost trust. When I was a drug addict, I, I burned many bridges. Lost my family, I lost everything. Those bridges were burned. Nobody trusted me. But then there's a place where I came to Christ and he changed me. Not because I changed me. See, you can't change yourself. Amen. But you can cooperate with the one who can change you. Amen. And the next thing, you think differently, see things differently. You've got a new nature within you. This is supernatural. But it only happens until you finally... I mean, how many walls do we have to hit of reality? How many bushes do we need to get dragged through? How many locked prison doors do we need to hear before we finally say, you know, I'm tired of this life? How much do we need to get to where I finally say, I'm sick and tired of living this way? I kept saying it, but I didn't know there was another way. <laughs> so I just tried another drug. Tried another place but didn't know that there was another way. That's why he's called the way, 
the truth, and the life. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 14, if you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and God rest upon you. On their part, he's blasphemed, but on your part, he's glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, that's Christ-like character, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it get, begins with us, what will be the end of those who do not obey the message or the gospel of God? And remember, the message is uh, the gospel is a message to mankind from God. That's what the gospel is. And he's saying, look, at, there is judgment. Judgment is not sentence. Does everybody get it? It's not a sentence. A judgment means God is judging you. He's checking you out, seeing where you are. What he's trying to do is expose us so we can get qualified to enter heaven. Does everybody get it? We will be a qualified citizenship there. So judgment is in the house of God because the body of Christ, the believers are to be an example to the world. So judgment is with us and judgment is nothing but exposure. God is judging you and me and the things, how we conduct ourselves, how we live. And what he's trying to do is bring it so there is an exchange for the things that are displeasing to him to where there's the things of pleasing to him so that we become full-blown sons and daughters of the Most High God. So do you fall in a place where you know him as daddy, not just God, not just Lord, but as Father? Father, that's what he's looking for. So there's judgment right now. But as we're seeing judgment and correction to the body of Christ, you're seeing exposure to the world. People have no idea or understand the wickedness and evilness of the world. And this world is ruled by Satan's kingdom. They have no understanding about the abuse and the abductions and sexual abuse that goes on. Eating of humans and all kinds of other things. They have no idea the wickedness and evil that goes on. There's 300,000 children missing a year out of this country and you don't even hear about it because the media serves darkness. Everything is ruled by Satan's kingdom in this realm. And God is always trying to make a way of escape for me and you. Always trying to make a way of escape. And hope that the day you give up your last breath, you're connected to home and not to hell. Because there is no, no in between. There's no purgatory. There's no temporary place. You either, when you give up that last breath, either the angels come and get you or the demons do. One or the other. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, verse 18. Uh, verse 17, I'm sorry. Let's say it again. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God, and if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the message of the truth of God Almighty? Now, if righteousness, one, is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. In other words, we partake of the sufferings. The sum of the sufferings is persecution. Some of the sufferings is having to give up everything. You know, when the Lord said to me, before I had my visitation and before he freed me, there was something he said to me. He said, Guy, do you want to get off of drugs and alcohol or do you want a new life? I couldn't answer that immediately. I had to think about that because I knew what he meant. He says, if I wanted a new, why? Because I gave up drugs and alcohol multiple times and went back to it, couldn't give it up. I knew that I had to give up my life. That means I had to give up my family. I had to give up my friends, associations, people, places, and things. I had to give it all up. 
I didn't know what was going to happen after that, but I just knew that the way I was living wasn't working. And when I said, I want a new life, his response back to me was, show me. I said, what? He said, show me. I thought something spectacular was going to happen right then and there. He said, show me. And I said, okay. So I did everything I could in my own strength. And after about a month or two, he came and visited me. Now, I didn't even accept him as Lord and Savior yet, but I knew this voice was from God. It had to be. Nobody would speak to me that way. The other voice would call me a moron, an addict, and an idiot. Well, sometimes. A loser? You'll never gain anything? You'll never get nowhere? Or fear would come. So I'd be bound by the voice of fear or voice of the past. But now I'm bound by the voice of love. Voice of peace. The voice of comfort. The voice of future. The voice that will never forsake me nor leave me. <laughs> and he's the voice of correction. But he corrects us. Amen? He corrects us to get us back on course. And too many people wimp out. They quit too early. They don't even give God the opportunity. Sometimes I like hear him say, give me a break. We need to give him a break and let him work. You know, he's got to fix everything up of our life. Everything we've done. One of the things I began to realize, how many people I murdered. How many people I murdered. I murdered people by approving of abortion at that time. I mu murdered people by selling them drugs. I murdered them by participating with wickedness. I murdered, I destroyed families, left children destitute of mothers and fathers because of my drug dealings. But I didn't see that then. I thought everybody had just a free will, which they do. But I didn't know that there was a will of God and a will of evil. See, there's a will of man and there's the will of God, and the will of man must proceed, not the will of man. I mean, the will of God must proceed, not the will of man. That's why we need to get together and learn and be refreshed and get connected and stay strong. Because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. It's easily, dri people drift so easily. One of the things the Lord is trying to do is we partake of the sufferings of Christ and persecutions of righteousness, because people are going to think you're weird then. And they thought I was worried. Man, what happened to you, you self-righteous? Um, no, man. I'm just, I just don't approve of those things anymore. I don't approve of your dirty jokes. I don't approve of the way you live. I don't approve of Satan. I don't approve of drugs. I don't approve of sin. I don't approve of it. doesn't mean I don't love you. I just don't approve of it. Amen. I want to approve what he approves of. And I want to disapprove what he disapproves of. Amen. That's how I want to live my life. I was no longer ashamed of my failures. He took them all away. Now I'm honored and blessed to carry the presence of God and to be his son and his offspring. Judgment is actually, I'm going to make it real simple, a check of the heart. Everyone say judgment, judgment. is the check of the heart. Second Chronicles 16. Second Chronicles 16. Everybody okay? In verse 8. <clears throat> I'm 
And this is the Lord speaking to the king of Israel. And he said, were the Ethiopians and the Leban not a huge army with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet, because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hands. In other words, there was victory, wasn't it? Why? Because they relied on the Lord. He said, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is what? Is loyal to him. And that's what he wants to talk about, a loyal heart today. Is there, and that's where we must examine ourselves. Do we truly have a loyal heart? A loyal heart is a wholehearted, is a person who is, whole, is a wholehearted spirit. They are a wholehearted spirit. In other words, not partial. Do you ever start things and not complete them? Amen. Amen. Well, when you become a believer, one of the things that is evident of the character of Christ is you complete everything that's been given to you. Amen. At least you should, or else your heart is not whole then you only have, you're only given impartial heart. And, and you're not loyal then. Listen, can you trust someone that doesn't trust you? No. And, and you'll know that their heart isn't loyal. Because their heart has been given to something else besides him. A loyal heart is a wholehearted spirit. A person that is a loyal heart to God is a wholehearted spirit. You can trust that person. In fact, God tells us to hang out with those people. That's called a pure heart. And the Lord says, only those who can come into my presence are those who have a pure heart with clean hands. And Psalm 111. Psalm 111. In my visitation from the Lord, my life was dramatically changed. Dramatically changed. But other people didn't understand the dramatic change in my life. So in that, I had to earn people's trust. Not that I was trying to, do you understand? This was just my new life. <laughs> because I was a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away because I allow things to be passed away. I wanted the help. I wanted to be free. I got to a point where I'd rather die than live this way. I didn't want to live that way no more. I, you might say that I finally reached a humble moment. Because God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Amen? I began to cry out to God. Two years cried out to God. And he finally rescued me. And you know what he did after he rescued me? He put me in fellowship. Amen. I can't believe he put me into a church. But he began to teach me and train me. I began to see miracle signs and wonders. I began to watch lives changed. Earning trust. In Psalm 111, verses 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it because what you speak is what you eat and what you eat is what you become. Because what I realized, somebody gave me this 12-step uh, program thing, addiction stuff. I jumped over all of them. Pring! Went one step right into the glory of God. But I began to read, somebody gave me that I, and I had all of these things. I turned it into a prayer. And as I turned it into prayer, as I was speaking it, God began to move, even though I didn't accept him as Lord and Savior yet. I still didn't know who God was. But I was speaking these prayers. 
I just took this sheet and began to speak it. I said, what else I got to lose? And because I was out on bail getting ready to go back to prison again, sentenced to life ones. Now I'm getting ready to go back to prison again. What did I have to lose? I lost everything. And I began to speak these prayers and I realized by speaking these things, something was happening. In verse 1, Psalm 111, what does it say? Praise the Lord. Now, how do you praise the Lord? Through your mouth. You sing. You're sowing. Listen, look at this. Now, I will praise the Lord with my what? My whole heart. This is how you get connected. It's amazing how many people quit. Two songs, I'm good. And you're still full of stink. It's ridiculous still concerned about yourself the first thing the enemy comes and tells you you're tired he promotes you man you worked good and hard this week far be it you should connect with the presence of god that will refresh you and strengthen you and empower you i will praise the lord with my what whole heart and where the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Well, welcome to the assembly of the upright and the congregation. This is how you work out. Amen. For some of us that haven't been to the gym in a while. You dance, you praise. You praise until a six-pack shows up. <laughs> Verse 2, the works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gl glorious and full of compassion. He has given food to those who what? Fear him. That means reverence him. It's not terror fear. Amen. Although if you're doing the wrong thing, you better have terror fear. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has declared to his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. God makes covenant with you. Can you imagine having a covenant with God Almighty? Snap. Man, I go to places, people say something to me, I said, my father owns this place. I pull in parking spaces. Man, you can't park it. My father owns this place. But I move quick if I see the police officer coming. <laughs> but I don't get tickets. Praise God. <laughs> oh, glory. Is everybody okay? Amen. Psalm 119. Let's read the first three verses. Remember, we're going to sow, right? We're going to speak it so we eat it. And what we eat is what we become. Glory. Everyone say blessed. blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Earth. Ooh. Which one would you rather be? <laughs> well, you have to be an idiot to say you want to be cursed. Although there are those people. Blessed are the what? Undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. And when you hear the law of the Lord, it's about his word. His commands, his, the word of God here. Now, what's the next one? Blessed are those who keep his testimonies and who what? Seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. Why? Because when you seek him with the whole heart, you praise him with the whole heart, you make connection with the presence of God, something changes in you. You know, just because I, I'm a pastor... Does it mean I want to come to every service? <laughs> Hello? There's days that I have a desire to just get on the bike and go cruise. It's a nice, beautiful day. That temptation comes right away. Man, it's beautiful. Let me get on that bike. and Lord, I'll just be a witness on the witness bike today. I'll just turn the service over to somebody else. 
and I have to slap that voice. <laughs> Come out. Because that's not what I'm supposed to do. Because there's something about the making connection with the, the nature of God and, and the presence of God is priorities come. Re, God reset your priorities. So what's my priority? To hear from you and to feed your sheep. Amen. To hear from you and to feed your sheep. Other than that, I've been on that bike. But I, I put priorities first. And I know that when the strongest temptations come, he's going to bless me. So when I get to service and I start praising and worshiping, I may not feel stinking nothing. And my mind's drifting everywhere. I got to take it, screw it on a little bit tighter and connect. But all of a sudden, once that connect is you keep worshiping and singing and praising and worshiping and singing and praising, then all of a sudden, bam! And there's a connection there. It's like, oh! Thank you. I knew you would come. I knew you would come. And, and I knew I needed to come. Now I'm full of joy and peace. And I don't give a hoot about nothing. Just to know that I'm pleasing him. See, when you connect and touch his heart, man, he touches yours. See, it starts from first on the inside before it comes to the outside. Amen? All glory. So we all want to be blessed. So what happens is that we connect, we, we worship him, we seek him with all of our heart. Then verse 3 says, they also do no iniquity. That means sin. They walk in his ways. Why? Because you've been empowered. You made connection. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Well, they will be now. Does everybody get it? Oh, hallelujah. Go to verse 33. Verse 33. What does he say now? You got to remember, he just made contact. He says, teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. Now there's a desire, a willingness to want to have more. And I shall keep it to the end. Give me what? Understanding and I shall keep your law. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. In other words, you're to take what God has given you today. This is not coming from some dude with the, you know. What you're hearing from is from the anointing of God. He's the one that's releasing today, not me. He's just using my mouth. But he's saying vital, important. He said, look it, if you take what you're hearing today and observe it with your whole heart, not just partial, take it in all the way, absorb it, digest it, intake it all the way, you will change. You will change. But if you're only going to give me part of it, then you won't change. Because the enemy comes and steals anything that's called a part of it. He can't steal what is whole. He steals what's part. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. Verse 35. Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I what? Delight them. In other words, you delight in them now. Why? Because when you make contact, you delight in You want more of God. Go to uh, uh, verse 145. Verse 145. Is everybody there? So are you here by coincidence? Uh-uh. God brought you here. He wanted you to hear what was being spoke today. Verse 45 was to say, I will cry out with my what? Whole heart. Hear me, O Lord, and I will keep your statutes. I will cry to you. Save me, and I will keep your testimonies. I rise before the dawning of the morning, and I cry for help. I hope in your word. My eyes are awake through the night watches that I may meditate on your word. He cried with all of his heart. You know, so many times we have such a hardened heart. And we have a hardened heart because 
the things that we've done that we haven't even forgiven ourselves yet. Everybody here has made mistakes. Amen? Amen. We're perfect in him, but not in us. <laughs> we've made mistakes. We've hurt people. We've done a lot of things. And the enemy just wants to remind you of them. But as you repent for these things that are under the blood, God don't remember, but the enemy does. So he tries to bring guilt, shame, and a hardened heart on us. And then he tries to convince us, oh, it's not going to work anyways. God doesn't hear you. God doesn't baloney. That's nothing but a lie from the voice of the stranger. But we have to battle that every day. Amen? Amen. Observe his words and his commands with our whole heart. Submit and obey with our whole heart. Cry out to him with your whole heart. Give your heart up. Romans 6. Romans 6. In verse 15. Is everybody there? Amen. Romans 6, verse 15. Let's speak it. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are the one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or obedience leading to what? To righteousness. But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from what? The heart. That form of doctrine which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves to what? Righteousness. Righteousness. I obeyed from the heart, not from the mind. Obeyed from the heart. In 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. Oh, it's good to have the pages turning on a Sunday morning. First Peter chapter 1. In verse 22. Training for reigning. Tested citizens, citizens for eternity. A loyal heart. A loyal heart is an individual whose whole heart is sold out to God. And, and he knows that God can do anything. And whatever you're lacking... He's always trying to bring something to you. But what he tries to do is get us to the place where we sow because it is a spiritual law. So you must sow before you can reap. People want to be spiritually blessed financially also, but yet they don't, not, they don't even tithe. So how can you become, you know, unless you get into accidents and get money and you get into, uh, uh, or, or an inheritance or something comes or you hit the lottery. That's unlikely, but anyways. Most of the people that do, they end up killing themselves anyways. But again, sowing and reaping. You speak, you sow in the spirit, you reap life. You sow time. You sow labor, you labor unto the Lord. What you sow is what you will reap. It's the same thing as what you want men to do unto you, you do unto them. Amen? Amen? But there is a spiritual law where God frees me and you. Spiritually to be freed, you must spiritually sow. And that's singing, worshiping, and decreeing the word, speaking it, speaking it, speaking it. Because there's life and death in the power of the tongue. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 22. Is everybody there? 
Since you have purified your souls in what? Obeying the truth through the Spirit in sincere love of the brethren. Love one another fervently out of what? A, pure, a loyal heart is a pure heart. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever, because all flesh is grass, and all the glory of man is as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and its flowers falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word by which the gospel was preached to me and you. Pure heart is a loyal heart. Amen? And a loyal heart is a pure heart. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4. And verse 16. Some of us need heart surgery. Spiritual heart surgery. <clears throat> Only Jesus is the true surgeon. Oh, yes. Is everybody here? Verse 16. Amen. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Lose heart. Lose heart. When you lose heart, you give part of your heart away. Amen. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? Temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. Wow. One of the things a, a pure heart and a loyal heart will always do is make what is unseen to become seen. Why? Because he does not want his heart to be entangled again with the things of this world and the past of shame and guilt and all the other things and addictions and whatever. So in this, that's why we're always exchanging our heart for the heart of the Lord. And But many times people lose heart. They get disappointed, discouraged. That's where you just got to hold on. afflictions. Sometimes there's a delay. Just because God didn't answer your prayer today doesn't mean it's not coming. Amen. Amen? What happens when a person begins to lose heart? They begin to grumble and complain. They begin to compromise. They become complacent. They become lazy. Lazy in what? Connecting to God's presence. They become ritualistic. So they begin to live out of the mind and not out of the spirit. And what happens then is the heart becomes divided. When a person begins to lose heart, that heart becomes divided. Does everybody understand that? Go to Mark 3. Anybody ever been discouraged? Anybody ever been disappointed? What'd you do with it? Amen. <laughs> Anybody ever been offended? <laughs> Did you hold on to it and cuddle it and let it abuse you? <laughs> Anybody ever become fearful? <laughs> How about insecure? <laughs> Did you hug it and cuddle it and pet it and try to feed it? Yeah. Those things will cause a divided heart. In verse 23. Mark 3, 23. And Jesus called his disciples to himself and, and spoke to them in parables. And he said, how can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot what? Stand. stand. And if a house is divided against itself, how can that house cannot stand? If Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand but has an end. 
No one can enter the strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder this house. Assuredly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven to the sons of men, and whatever blasphemies they may utter, but he who blasphemies against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation. Wow. Again, a house divided against itself. If your heart has been divided, it can't stand. Amen. Does everybody understand that? It can't stand. You will have troubles. You will have torment. You will not have that peace that you should. You will try to buy it. People get frustrated and the first thing they might do is go to the refrigerator. Start eating. Or they might need to go shopping because they're looking to fulfill them. Others turn to drugs and alcohol. Whatever they may turn to. They're turn, but they're not turning to God's presence and repentance. Lord, forgive me for agreeing with this. Forgive me for allowing this to happen. Why? Because you get washed by the blood and you get reconnected. What the snap? Heart divided cannot stand. You cannot serve two masters. Amen. You will lose. Deuteronomy 30. What's God looking for? Loyal hearts. That is a wholehearted spirit. That's what we would be. Deuteronomy 30. Is everybody okay? Amen. Are you learning? Amen. Verse 9. Deuteronomy 30, verse 9. The Lord your God will make you abound in all work of your hand, in fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your land for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over you for good as he rejoiced over your fathers. If you do what? Amen. Obey the voice of the Lord your God and keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in this book of the law. And if you turn to the Lord your God with all of your heart and all of your soul. With all of your heart and all of your soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions and imaginations. Everything will turn to the good. That's wholehearted. Amen. God is looking for a loyal heart. It's amazing how many people are willing to just give up everything all at once. Boom. Because something's not going their way. Amen. Well, that heart can't be loyal then. Psalm 18. When the flood of the enemy comes in, you need to give up a song of praise. It's called the song of deliverance. You need to start quoting the word. I, or even just saying, I trust you, Lord. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. Until mistrust goes. Too many people give right into it. <laughs> That's where the Lord talks about the seeds that were planted on stony ground, on good soil. Amen? Amen. Some that took root and some didn't. And when trouble comes, up, they don't even take care of the word. They don't even believe it no more. Psalm 18, verse 20. Let's speak it. The Lord rewarded me according to my what? righteousness according to the cleanness of my hands he has recompensed me so who's going to reward you the lord he'll make a way how many of all know god can speak to your boss how many of you know god can speak to the judge oh snap i know that offhand right? even when a pretender attorney god can still speak 
but he will reward you on your righteousness and clean hands. He's, verse 21, for I have kept the ways of the Lord and I have, not, I, have, I have not wickedly departed from my God. So he's trusted. For all his judgments were before me and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him and I kept myself from sinning or iniquity. Therefore the Lord is what? Re recompense me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the merciful, you will show yourself mercy. With the blameless man, you will show yourself blameless. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. With the devious, you will show yourself shrewd. For you will save the humble, but will bring down the haughty looks. A loyal heart is a pure heart. Amen? A loyal, God will reward you if you're willing to wait patiently. I mean, everybody wants a drive through, you know. Drive through this, drive through that, you know. Luke 16. Loyal hearts. A loyal heart. Luke 16, verse 10. So would you consider a loyal heart to be a faithful one? Yes. Verse 10, let's speak it. He who is faithful is in what is least is faithful also in much. He who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful to what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon or the world. Amen? Because the devil will take you out. A loyal heart is a faithful heart. One of the things in lo a loyal heart is an individual that completes the mission or the task. Goes the extra mile, sees through all the way. How, what else can I do to? In other words, when a person is at work, he doesn't, a person that doesn't have a loyal heart just does minimum. They do minimum. And, and if your heart is not loyal to the Lord, you'll do minimum. You'll do what you need to do, and that's that. You won't see all the way through. You won't go the extra mile. You won't do that because your heart really isn't loyal. And this is where we must examine ourselves. Is there other things I could have done to gone an extra mile to assist or whatever? <coughs> then your heart not loyal to him. In fact, you're not even loyal to yourself. Amen. That's where our heart is still divided. It's not a wholehearted heart. You're not a wholehearted hearted spirit yet. And that's where conversion comes. That's where discipline comes. That's where we are in a place of consistency. Because if your person acts that's not consistent, you can't have a loyal heart to God. It's impossible. The word says, submit to God so you can resist the devil. Then you're not resisting the devil. And your heart is not, is actually in a place of divided. And a person like that is usually up and down. They're up and down. One day they're okay, the next day they're miserable. I hate when people say to me, oh, I just got up on the wrong side of the bed. I didn't know there was a wrong side of the bed. You shouldn't have got out of bed <laughs> until you got up on the right side of the bed. You made contact with home. Individuals that complete missions, they go the extra mile. It's a place of the person that denies himself and puts the kingdom first. 
That's a loyal heart. Who volunteers because their heart is loyal. Well, they're, they're out to express and expand the kingdom, not themselves. It's amazing how many times you ask for volunteers, everybody books. Poof. Because their heart's not loyal. They're not connected. Matthew 24. Twenty four forty five. A loyal heart is a faithful heart. Matthew twenty four forty five. Who then is faithful and a wise servant whom his master may ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying, I don't need to continue on this, and begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and an hour that he is not aware of. And he will cut him in two, appoint him his portions with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Wow. Do all things with a whole heart, not a part heart. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 28. For today. So take this message to heart. Examine yourself. Do you really have a loyal heart? Or do you have a divided heart? Have you really given it all to the Lord? If not, it's a good day to do it. Proverbs 28, verse 13. Everybody there? He who covers his sins will not prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have what? Mercy. Mercy. Happy is a man who's always reverent. reverent. That means a person that is giving honor to God. But he who hardens his heart will what? Oh. Fall into calamity. Wow. Hebrews 3. Hebrew. Hallelujah. Verse 7. Therefore means that you have a choice to cooperate. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. In the day of trial in the wilderness... Well, your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, They always go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily. Well, it's called today, lest any of you be hardened to the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Well, it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear they do, would not enter his rest, but those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. Wow. A hardened heart does not hear God. A hardened heart does not accept conviction. A hardened heart will not accept correction. 
And a hardened heart is disconnected from God's presence. And I want to close at Matthew 10. Loyal hearts. Matthew 10, 32. Let's speak it. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but I what? A sword, and that is called the sword of the Spirit. It is his word also. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Why? Because his heart is not loyal. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Why? Because his heart is not loyal. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Why? Because God is desiring that we become in that place and position where we have a loyal heart. We should be wholehearted spirits. Amen? Amen. You and I can't do it. Only he can. But it's only by cooperating with him can that be manifested. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I ask today, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the seed that has been parted in each and every one through your word that you spoke to us would be protected by the blood of the Lamb that would penetrate to every part of our being and members. And that would bring counsel, correction, direction, conviction, and healing to us that we would begin to start making the right choices to have a pure, loyal, trusted heart that you can trust all the days of our life in Jesus' name. How many said amen?